Hello there everybody, a Data Pioneer here with the Linux Unix Tech Channel. Hope everybody's well out there today. Um, I'm out on my Farron OS Linux desktop and uh, today what I thought I would do is um, fire up a, a virtual machine of Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. Now this is the latest version of Ubuntu available on Ubuntu.com and we'll get out to that website in a little while. Um, but uh, that is the latest version. If you've never installed uh, anything in a virtual machine or if you've never installed Ubuntu in a virtual machine, then stay tuned. Uh, we'll do that right after this. Okay, I'm out, um, back on my uh, website here uh, for Ubuntu, and it is at ubuntu.com, uh, and it is the latest version of Ubuntu 20.04 LTS that we're looking at right here. Uh, it has been released, of course, back in April, um, and it is um, has a name of uh, Focal Foci. I, I've already uh, been running it on, on my laptop and on my uh, desktop as well and um, I love it it's it's a great operating system so we'll get into it today we're going to concentrate on installing a, a virtual machine of it and so the first thing you need to do is you need to go to this website ubuntu.com click on the Ubuntu and go to the downloads link here and you can see that you have two uh, options or actually more than that but two options that are that most people go for one is the Ubuntu desktop and that is this button right here if you want to install the Ubuntu server you're more than welcome to do that but remember it does not have a GUI so you will uh, not be able to uh, get into the GUI interface once that's installed you'll have uh, the terminal available only now the server version is for Mac and Windows and ARM uh, IBM power and S390X the desktop we're going to put in a virtual machine, but you can obviously install this on bare metal. Uh, and in fact, I would recommend you install it on bare metal. But you know what I do is oftentimes is I install uh, operating systems in a virtual machine the first time I encounter those, and uh, I can take a look at them that way. And they're, they're segments, you know, separated from the rest of the operating system that I'm running. Uh, so if something happens to it, it crashes or whatever, you know, it's not a problem. But now Ubuntu 20.04 will not, it's not going to crash on you, man. This is a, uh, a tried and true operating system. Uh, like I said, I've been using it for a while now since it came out and uh, haven't had any issues at all. So let's go ahead and get started with this. Uh, first thing you need to do is click on this button right there. And it's going to come out to a thank you for downloading Ubuntu desktop and uh, take you out here to actually um, download the ISO file uh, and install it. Now I've already done that so I'm not going to do that again. I will tell you that if you want to you're more than welcome to um, contribute to Ubuntu here uh, on this page. You can contribute with PayPal, contribute any amount that you like or you can um, tell it what you're doing and it uh, you know puts the numbers in there and then so when you go down to contribute it tells you how much that they think that would be nice if you would contribute to them if you come down to the bottom of the page here um, you get more information on learn how to try Ubuntu before you install uh, or do you want to upgrade your operating system now you can click on this follow your simple guide or our simple guide I highly recommend you do that if you've never installed Ubuntu before um, but if you already run Ubuntu, like uh, you know 18.04 or 19.10, uh, you can come down here to the Do you want to upgrade your operating system? And you can click on the How to Upgrade link, and it'll take you out to walk you through the process of upgrading the operating system. There is an upgrader um, that is available from Ubuntu to assist with the process of upgrading so that you don't have to do... Uh, a, fl a fresh install or what I call a wipe and load of your operating system. Okay, so let's uh, get out onto my desktop again and let me get into uh, virtual machine. What I've done is I've 
gone up and I've uh, downloaded a, an earlier version of VirtualBox, uh, which is, I think, a 5.x version. Let's go back to about virtual, yeah, it's VirtualBox 5. Now, why have I done that? Well, I've had issues with 6.1, so I went back to 5 to see if those issues would go away, and for the most part, they have. You may have no problem with VirtualBox 6.1. I'm uh, not saying you shouldn't use it. I'm not saying you should not download it and use it. Um, I just had issues with it on my system. I'm not sure why. But uh, to get around that, I just went back to a, an earlier version. So I went back to VirtualBox 5. So let me close that. So let's, uh, let's do this. Let's go ahead. What I did was um, I have a... Uh, I have a, a, a link out here which is called File Store Vol 2 on Raspberry Pi. Um, it's a um, SMB CIFS link to a spinning hard drive. And I have a folder here called ISOPool. If you double click on it, you can see that I have the Ubuntu 2004 desktop LTS ISO there. So that's where we're going to grab it and use it from. I uh, just wanted to show you that before we get started. It's not on the local machine. It's actually hanging out uh, as a network attached storage device. All right. So let's get back into Vir Oracle Virtual Machine Virtual Box Manager and let's click on the new button here. And it opens this window, which is the name and operating system window. And so I'm going to call it Ubuntu. And you'll notice that when I typed in Ubuntu, it went ahead and put the version down here. Uh, what it thought I was trying to install and that's good because you have a pull down menu of a bunch of distros of uh, Linux here that are available even other Linux if you don't have one specifically assigned uh, and the reason for that is, is that each distro of Linux has its own particular uh, attributes for setting up the hardware and, and things like that and so if I were to, instead of Ubuntu, put in, uh, for instance, CentOS, uh, notice that it thinks that I'm going to um, CentOS, I'm sorry, CentOS, there we go. Um, it thinks I'm trying to install Red Hat in 64-bit, and since CentOS is a uh, community enterprise operating system based on Red Hat, um, that's good. Okay, so it knows, it's intelligent enough to know that I'm uh, doing that. Now you can install things other than Linux. You can install in your VirtualBox uh, Solaris uh, BSD which is a Berkeley software distribution of, of Unix. Uh, IBM OS 2 uh, I haven't seen that in a long time. Mac OS X and any other. Okay so it by default is sitting on Linux and so let's go ahead and put in the Ubuntu And I'm going to call it 2004 LTS for the long-term support version of Ubuntu. And it did uh, default to the Ubuntu 64-bit. That's exactly what I want. So let me click Next. All right, so now we're up to memory size. And um, I have 16 gigs of RAM in this system, so I'm not really concerned about giving this thing. You know, I could give it 8 gigs for that matter, or up to 8 gigs and not be too concerned about it. But what I'm going to do is... What I normally do is give uh, a distribution of Linux uh, 4 gigs of RAM here. So I'm going to put in 4096. You can, by default, give it uh, 2 gigs of RAM and be OK. Um, and if you're running uh, something that's, uh, you know, XFCE desktop environment or a server, for instance, Ubuntu server, you could probably give this 1 gig of RAM and be OK, all right, because there is no desktop environment no GUI alright so now that I've given it 4096 let's go ahead and click next and it's asking me do you want to create a virtual hard disk now yes I do so let's click create and then it says the uh, on this screen uh, hard disk file type I'm going to be using the VDI or virtual box disk image I want to click next and then I want it to be dynamically allocated as opposed to fixed size um, so I'm going to Make sure the radio button is ticked for dynamically allocate. Now, what's the difference? You may be asking yourself, what's the difference between dynamically allocating storage or allocating it on a fixed size? All right, so if I gave this, um, uh, let's say, uh, 20 gigabytes of, of uh, VDI space, if I click the 
fixed size button here, what's going to happen is it's going to go out and allocate that fixed size of 20 gigabytes. If I click instead the dynamically allocated, it's going to start out with a lower amount or lesser amount of than 20 gigabytes, and then it's going to, as it as needed, it's going to dynamically increase the size of that storage up to, but not exceeding the 20 gigabytes that I that I give it. Okay, so I'm going to click dynamically allocated. I'm going to click next, and here's where I give it the actual size that I want. And dynamically, I'm going to give it 20 gigs. So it's going to start out smaller than 20 gigs, and then it's going to move up to the full size of 20 gigs as as needed. It'll probably never get there because this is going to be a short-term um, virtual machine VM, and so we'll never reach that limit. But that's okay. All right, so let's go ahead and click Create, and that creates the virtual machine for Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. Now, we could go ahead and start it by clicking the Start button. I'm not going to do that because what I want to do is I want to tweak it a little bit. I'm going to get into the settings, if you will, and do some things. So I'm going to go ahead and click Settings here. And um, under the General tab, um, there really isn't anything that I need to do here other than uh, Shared Clipboard. I do want to do that at some point. So let's click away from Disabled and let's do a bi-directional here for the Shared Clipboard. Drag and drop, we can change that from disabled to bi-directional as well uh, so that we have the ability to drag and drop from the host operating system, which in my case is Farron OS, to Ubuntu 2004 uh, LTS and back and forth. So, uh, And likewise from 2004 LTS back to my host machine. All right, so I've got that set. Click System. Uh, base memory is still 4096. That's fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and untick the floppy because we don't have a floppy drive in this system and I'm going to select the hard disk and move it up so that when we reboot it boots up on the hard disk instead of the optical drive. All right. Um, don't need to make any other changes here. Let's click display. Now we do have a graphical user interface here in this virtual machine and we could leave it on 16 megabytes of virtual uh, memory or video memory I mean. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and bump it up to the full 128 megabytes of virtual memory. We only have one monitor. We're scaling at 100%. Uh, I don't care about the 3D acceleration for now. Uh, no remote display and video capture is fine. We leave those settings as they are. Let's click on storage. And here I'm going to click the empty here under the uh, IDE controller. I'm going to come across to the optical disk. This, this is the same as if you had a physical machine and you had an optical drive in it so I'm going to click and open that and then I'm going to choose a virtual optical disk file okay then I'm going to go out to uh, my downloads folder and I've moved the ISO folder here for convenience uh, moved it under the downloads and I, so I double click that there's my Ubuntu 2004 desktop LTS ISO I'm going to select that and click open and so that places uh, that particular uh, ISO file underneath here under the IDE controller. Okay, so this is like your regular physical uh, CD CD-ROM drive. All right, think of it that way. Okay, so let's uh, let's go ahead and click uh, audio. And for audio, we're going to use the standard ICH AC ninety-seven. We're going to enable the audio output. Uh, one of the things I do want to change here for sure is network. I'm using adapter 1 here for the network and I have enabled that adapter. Um, I can use it in, um, as attached to NAT which is a network address translation but rather what I'd like to do is down arrow and select bridge adapter and we're going to get an ENP2S0 which is uh, Ethernet port 2 socket 0 uh, connection here and what that does is it allows the virtual machine to be on the same um, network that my host machine is on because DHCP is going to assign uh, here with the bridge adapter of DHCP or my dynamic host configuration protocol server running on my LAN will assign an IP address to it and I'll be able to touch it, ping it, do whatever I want to. All right, under serial ports, we don't need to make any changes here. Under USB, we want to tell it we're using USB 3.0 controller. 
for shared folders. We don't have any right now, but we could set up shared folders in here if we like. And under user interface, uh, we don't really need to make any changes here either. So let's go ahead and click OK. And so we're ready to launch this thing. So let's go up and click Start and uh, let it go. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and click uh, View Full Screen Mode, bring it up to Full Screen Mode, and uh, let it get started. Now it checks the disks automatically, uh, Ubuntu does in the installer. And so that's okay. Uh, it shouldn't find any issues because this is a brand new VDI. And so we'll uh, let it do its thing and then let it come up to the installer itself. And then we'll get this thing installed. Uh, it will take some time to install. So what I'll do, I will pause the video and come back when it's done. All right. So it should be coming up to uh, the installer at this point. I don't expect it to be full screen. I'll be surprised if it is. I'll be happy if it is, but I don't expect it to be. And it is, so that, that's great. All right, so here is the operating system. And here's the installer. And when it comes up and opens up, you can do two things. You can try Ubuntu. You can do that. There's a live version of Ubuntu here. So you can try to make sure that you know that you like what you see uh, that the hardware is going to be found and you're not going to have any problem now this is a virtual machine so I don't expect any hardware issues per se it is on the English version here initially if you wanted to change languages you could do that and of course then this language would change for instance French now we are in French okay so this is great to have let's go back to English I don't speak French uh, so let's go to cl click install Ubuntu and here we're going to be using the U.S. English keyboard layout and uh, U.S. English here as well. All right, so let's click Continue. Uh, we're going to use the normal installation here. We're not going to do anything fancy. Um, if you wanted to, if you were doing this on the bare metal uh, and you wanted to do a minimal install, you could click the Minimal Install button here and you would only get Web Browser and Basic Utilities. If you do a normal installation, however, you get uh, web browser utilities, you get a full office suite and other media players and other games and things like that. I'm going to leave it on, um, I'm going to do a minimal installation here because we're not going to save this VM anyway. And I can tick the box here that says download updates while updating, or installing rather, Ubuntu. But to save time, I'm going to uncheck that or untick it. Um, one good thing to have is if you're doing this on bare metal especially and you have uh, you know, a gaming card or something like that, you might want to do install third-party software for graphics. If you're doing NVIDIA graphics or something like that, I'm not. So I'm going to click untick it. And uh, this way I just, it'll be quicker this way, take less time. Let's go ahead and click continue here. And when it comes back uh, up, we're going to tell it to erase the disk and install Ubuntu. We're not going to have any advanced features here. Um, this is the installation type we're doing. We're not going to do something else. We're just going to erase the disk and install Ubuntu. So let's click install now. It says if you continue the changes that you've listed will be written to the disk. That's okay. Let's click continue. And now it's asking what part of the world am I in? Uh, I'm in the New York uh, City time zone in the United States. I'm going to leave it there. I don't reside in New York City, but that's closest to me. Let's click Continue. What is your name? I'm going to go ahead and put my name in. Computer name, I'm going to call this thing uh, Ubuntu 2004 LTS VM. Uh, I'm going to pick a username. I'm going to call it Data Pioneer, of course. Password, I'm just going to give it password. Okay. Um, require my password to log in. Of course, you would not use password for yours, but that's a weak password. Let's go ahead and click Continue here. And it is off and running. So it's installing Ubuntu now. And when it finishes, I will be back. Okay, so the installation is completed. And we're at the screen right now for uh, installation complete. Uh, it says it is completed, and we need to hit that Restart button. It took about 10 minutes or so to do this install. It was a minimal install, so I'm real happy with that. And so you will be as well. If you do a full install, expect it to be a little longer. I do have a, a kind of a fast machine here. 
Um, so it's an i3, uh, Core i3, 7th uh, generation processor uh, with 16 gigs of RAM. So you can, you know, kind of figure out how long it's going to take for you. But probably closer to 15, 20 minutes if you're doing a full install. And if you're doing updates at the same time, uh, may even take longer. So let's go ahead and click that Restart Now button and let this thing uh, restart. Now remember, uh, if you recall, I unticked the floppy and also um, moved the hard disk up into the boot order. So we should be able to, once we hit the Enter key here, it should boot directly into the hard drive, should not go back to the optical drive. Uh, and it does. It is doing that, so that's fine. And so it is coming up to the Ubuntu 2004 LTS operating system. Hopefully it'll come back to full screen, uh, 1920 by 1080, uh, 16 by 9 resolution, and it does. All right, so let's go ahead and hit enter here and put in my password, which was password. All right, and now that we've done that, it should boot up into the operating system and we can take a look at a couple of things. I want to get into the terminal. Uh, this is not a review of, of Ubuntu 2004 LTS, so I'm not going to get into that. But uh, once you get in here, you can uh, connect your online accounts. I'm going to go ahead and skip that. Uh, you can set up Live Patch if you want. Uh, I'm not going to do that for this VM, so let's click Next. Um, help improve Ubuntu, so you can send Ubuntu information or not. I choose not to send information. Click Next. Uh, I don't want my operating system phoning home. For privacy, you can you can uh, check to turn on location services, you know, and you may want to do that if you're using things that uh, are location specific. I'm not, and this is a virtual machine, so I'm going to click next, and then it says you're ready to go, and here's a list of software that uh, is already installed and ready to run on your system. So I'm going to click done, and we're we're good to go. All right, so let's go down here to the application button. And let's come up to the terminal. Let me open the terminal here. Get a terminal open. And uh, let me expand this a little bit. And let's see if I can't uh, bump that up for you. Okay, shift and uh, let's see. Nope, that's not it. Oh, this is a virtual machine. It may not let me do that. Oh, there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and click, uh, type in uname A. And let's see what uh, kernel we have available. We're running Linux kernel Ubuntu 2004 LTS virtual machine 5.4.0-42 generic. Okay, um, and uh, this is just given information to our date timestamp. So let's do a DFH to get a human readable on the uh, file structure of the uh, disks in use. And you can see that here we have. Uh, for uh, dev SDA1, which is the hard drive itself, um, we have 1% uh, being used for boot EFI. And let's see, we have uh, dev SDA5. That's the 20 gigabyte hard disk that we set up for VDI uh, disk allocation. So dev SDA5 is the actual drive we need to look at. We're using 5.4 gigs, and so we've, we're well under uh, the usage here for the dynamically allocated drive. Uh, so we have 13 gigabytes of drive left. We're only using 30% and that's mounted at the root of the file system. Okay, uh, one of the first things you would like to do here or should do rather uh, once you do a clean install, uh, recommend this for any any operating system that you set up and uh, distro of Linux specifically. Go ahead and do uh, sudo apt upgrade update and uh, sudo apt upgrade and uh, just do a Y switch so you don't get prompted for um, you know answering questions so here I've combined the commands uh, two commands into one with a double ampersand which means uh, perform this part of the command if and only if this part of the command is successful so let me go ahead and hit enter and asking for my uh, data pioneer password and it was password so it's going to go ahead and run uh, the updater and go out and uh, update the operating system itself 
and so it fetched 750 kilobytes in one second and it's going to grab some things here and install those if it doesn't take very long I'll just go ahead and leave it in real time uh, it looks like it's going to grab quite a bit of stuff and so what I'll probably do is stop the video and then come back and um, join you again whenever it's done okay I'm back um, we're at about 90 percent right now and so we're about to wrap up this update it, it did take about five minutes or six minutes to complete uh, or will by the time this is done um, didn't take very long to update the entire system uh, running the up, update and upgrade um, I'm not going to do a distro upgrade here although that's another thing that you might want to do uh, sudo uh, apt up up the disk upgrade dist dash upgrade you might want to run that I'm not going to do that in this case all right so we're up to the 99 percent and um, we'll let this finish and then we'll uh, go ahead and close the terminal get back to the desktop and uh, it's important that you run updates here um, on your operating system because then that way you have all the latest uh, patches all the latest bug fixes um, as of the release of Ubuntu and uh, that you grabbed from the ISO file from the web um, and you also are protected for security purposes uh, when you do update your system because there are security updates that are generated and released all the time alright so we're done here and so let me go ahead and clear the screen and let's, let's go ahead and exit and get out of that alright so uh, let me go ahead and say remind me later here because it's I've already done that just did that just now we don't need to do that anymore and um, this as I said this is not a review of Ubuntu 2004 LTS um, do that at some other po point in time but I just wanted to show you that uh, for purposes of virtual box uh, updating the system getting uh, Ubuntu 2004 LTS or any distro of Linux for that matter install on a virtual machine is a very easy thing to do you can see uh, in this process how easy it was to install a virtual machine of Ubuntu 2004 LTS uh, in VirtualBox 5 so if this was a uh, helpful video uh, especially if you've never installed a virtual machine before or a virtual machine of Linux um, go ahead and hit that uh, thumb up button down at the bottom there of the video and let me know that you liked it uh, it'll help my channel if you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe to my channel as well. Uh, this has been Data Pioneer with the Linux Unix Tech Channel. Hope you enjoyed it. Have the nice rest of your day and take care. Bye-bye.